there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. And if this is your first visit, my name is Peter Holmes and I live on a classic wooden motor cruiser along with the loving memory of my pup, Jordy. All while fixing it up for some pretty ambitious cruising. And if that's the sort of thing you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. back up in Genoa working on poem and well yes you probably noticed we also have a new dinghy um, this was uh, cheap and cheerful but it is a sweet little minto and it'll be the false creek semi disposable if someone steals it I won't cry dinghy anyway so let's uh, see what we're up to this week uh, again <laughs> I haven't been able to Jesus Rose sweet um, I haven't been able to procure the wood I need for the aft cabin, but as always, there's tons and tons of stuff to do. Uh, so we'll just jump on that, including getting going on seriously advancing, refinishing the cabin sides. This is actually a sweet little dinghy. Nice and sharp. finally close this in and that's pretty straightforward a piece of mahogany the new plywood over this but first I have to put a couple of uh, little ledgers uh, so that I can fix it and um, I think that'll be pretty straightforward I'll probably wait till it's in place uh, before I do the bottom one just so that I can make sure it's exactly lined up all right then so obviously flush at the top is pretty straightforward and vertical or not parallel with the door frame is by far the most important because that's what the eye is going to see here well you may recall that this whole structure has to have the lower part of it removable on relatively short notice the upper part is permanent so or relatively permanent so this gets a band uh, that'll go right in here um, and at the join there'll be another little bead a smaller version of this and to cover the screws, there will just be narrow strips of uh, mahogany, solid mahogany, that are tacked on with my pin nailer, and therefore relatively easily pried off to access the screws. However, this top section will be, uh, as you can see, I've got full screws in here that will be bunged, and that will stay permanent. By the time this extra band goes on here, this is going to look so skookum. And well, it's after five, uh, so I don't want to make too much noise. Gonna bring the boat over to this side and spend a couple hours with the heat gun. Very, very entertaining, I'm sure. Few 
people have asked me why I use the small scraper for this operation, thinking, well, a wider scraper would move more quickly. But not actually, because it takes quite a bit of force um, to get it to scrape deep enough. And with a larger, wider scraper, you're just having to push two or three times as hard to achieve that same force. So with the small blade, I don't have to push as hard. It's much, much easier, believe it or not. Lots of strokes, not having to worry so hard. actually going to get rounded over to avoid any injury. There we go and now we can cover up these screws and these pieces will just get tacked on in the anticipation of possibly having to remove them in the future. And here. Make sure that lines up in both directions. So now I've come up against a bit of a problem. Right about here, there needs to be a platform to rest your feet on. Um, I've been calling it the plinth. And I've always imagined it was some kind of fold down thing that would be on a piano hinge here and would tip up and there'd be a strut underneath of some sort. Couple of problems with that. Uh, the main problem is that currently the Chevy engine uh, box is <laughs> in the space where I need to do this. Now I could make it a little bit shorter, but it just makes it a lot harder to get up into the dinette if you can't get up onto that. So I haven't really decided about that yet. The other thing is, at least in the meantime, the table is sitting on a pedestal and that pedestal bolts down in the center of this space. So if I have two panels that come up, they won't be able to go down again because all those screws will be anyway. So. Trying to develop something that's good for now, but also part of the permanent solution. I'm gonna give this a little thought. Okay, I've contemplated and I've decided I'm just gonna do something temporary. So I'll put in a ledger and some um, bridge ply over that and mount the base for the table here and it'll lift out relatively easily if there's any reason to have to go forward, an emergency, so to speak. Uh, but generally it'll stay in place uh, on the whole. Okay. All of that will happen after this is finished. Uh, so I have uh, some bungs to put in. Actually, before we get on with the relatively straightforward task of cutting bungs, I have to deal with what's going on with the back support for the back here. Please disregard this horrible pre-finished birch. It was a very bad idea and it will be replaced with something much nicer and some edging. But in the meantime, um, I have to build like a shelf in here that's going to be contoured to the side of the boat and that will support the back of the backrest when it's in the up position. It also has to be able to um, create a stop here at the end. This is exactly 75 inches, therefore it's the length of the bed. So when it's in bed mode, I'd like it to be able to create a stop there so when the panels are sitting here, it's all held in snugly. So. There's a lot to think about here, and uh, as usual, I haven't really figured it out yet. So, uh, yeah, give me a minute. So I'm going to do this in a series of scribes. Um, relatively crude at first. Right there, and the same amount all the way up to there. So 
So once you've roughed out a cut like this, then work from the back side and uh, that way the blade will be cutting into the good work and you won't make a mess of it. All right, let's carry on and widen and deepen this just a hair. These are fitting really, really nicely now. So I'm going to put a bunch of um, uh, Craig pockets in it uh, because this is going to be attached with pocket screws. Excellent. All right then, so this just snugs right in here. First thing I want to confirm is that it's square. Oh, remember this little critter? Okay, then. I can't say that was easy and I'm probably going to support it with some sort of splice. I'm still not sure what's going to happen in here. Anyway. So these are the slopey little backresty things that go on an angle um, up against the, uh, the board I just put on. And uh, because it's plywood and we're going to see the top edge of it, I'm just going to uh, tack on a little bit of real mahogany just to make it pretty. And to make sure it stays there, we'll put on just a little glue. All right then. It is a bit of a fiddle uh, to reach around in behind and hold this in place. And now that is super solid, both in the recline mode and in dime mode. I just so with this all in place, we just need a little end cap here, uh, which I've eased to match the end of the handrail. And uh, I'll just put a little glue on this and a couple of pins and it's not going anywhere. And it's time for the bungs. And you all know what comes next. Good old tongue oil. <sighs> and there we go. Holy mackerel. I'm just loving it. Loving it. Loving it. Now, of course, these ends need to be filled in. Um, there'll be a panel here of some sort and a panel here of some sort. The neat thing about both of these is that they're very um, near the helm. So there may actually be some controls and stuff in here and probably battery switches and big breakers down there. Uh, at least that's the plan for now. But on the whole, I'm really, really, really pleased. All right, so cleaning up the port side of the inside of the cabin sides was about as I expected. Lots of deficits, and that, you know, that's just fine. It's strange. This person probably painted the inside of the cabin sides here because they thought there were too many defects. And honestly, I kind of like seeing all the history of the boat all in one place. Like if you look here very carefully, you can see that the original planks were splined. You can see the big spline in here that would have uh, structurally kept the planks together nicely but outside here you can see a later repair of a spline that was put in to deal with an open seam and anyway I just honestly I love to see that anyway we'll see uh, we'll see if I can get this to look as good as the other side which frankly I find turned out really really well now while I had the sander out 
I had a quick go at the sole. I'll try to keep the camera shadow out of what I'm looking at here. Um, now I knew it wasn't teak, uh, but I didn't know what it was. And I think I've determined it's actually dug fir, a uh, combination of the way the grain looks and how easy it was to sand. But the uh, caulking or the paying or whatever we call it in a deck um, seems to be in pretty good shape. Uh, I don't think I can really let this go completely raw. I think I'll probably oil the deck and that means I'll have to relatively consistently oil it uh, to keep it sealed in and reel it into good shape. But anyway, that'll be my experiment. See all these little inside corners and tough edges to get to? Haha! <laughs> Pretty soon I'm gonna get to play with my new um, oscillating tool, fine oscillating tool sanding kit. Anyway, that'll be a lot of fun. But in the meantime, I just gotta grunt through the large flat areas and get it as nice as I can. Now, if you have a look here, you can see that this is not in, I mean, it's not in excellent shape. Uh, but this is as far as I'm going to take it because of the dark stain I'm putting on I think this will come up just nice without me having to take that much further than that Anyway, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it looks shortly because I'm gonna have some stain on here in a little while Okay, I'm super excited about this. Okay. This is uh, 60 grit. We'll see what this does. It's fantastic. I gotta do a little more in here, but I really like the way this works. Let's see if I can clean that up. <laughs> My new best friend. Well, good morning. How about that? Sunshine in the shed. Absolutely fabulous uh, through this one tiny window. We haven't had much sun yet this spring. Anyway, okay, stain time. I'm going to stain the entire aft end of the boat up to about the first window um, because in the not too distant future I expect to turn it around and uh, work on all the rest of it. And I just, I just want to see how well these sort of irregular areas uh, turn into something uh, pretty reasonable. And I think it's going to be just fine. But anyway, we're all going to find out together. Let's get at it. And so we'll start on the inside and off we go. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, on to the main event. Alright then. Well, and there we go. I can't say it's perfect, no doubt about it, but considering the condition of the wood underneath, I am very, very, very pleased with the results. Um, you do have to keep moving pretty quick, so you gotta pick a speed that you can sort of maintain to keep that wet edge, uh, but I'm just, just loving it. You can see the quality on the cabin sides, I don't know if you have enough light where you are, is just far superior because the wood was in much better shape than the actual decks. But you know, by the time those get varnished and tidied up, I think it'll look just, just fine. Whew! Fin Fin! Well, hello there and welcome to the Travels with Jordy Beer of the Week, coming to you this week from the glorious uh, aft cockpit of MV Zephyrus. Isn't it gorgeous today? It's the best day yet of 2023. It's unbelievable. It's like instant summer, but it, it's it's not. But anyway, it's lovely and sunny. But anyway, before the stop being frosted, I want to show you the beautiful frosted glasses that Lady uh, Zephyrus has prepared for. Okay. 
the beer and it's doing? Driftwood, which is my favorite brewery and it's a new beer from them. It's simply called a Pale Ale, uh, but has a lovely uh, picture of a nice uh, lapstrake uh, clinker dinghy on it. Anyway, it's it's the artwork on Driftwood is always really nice. Driftwood is right local here in Victoria and absolutely fabulous. Absolutely. How's Finn? He's B, doesn't he? He's had a, a play with seven dogs today. A big uh, <laughs> runaround day, definitely. He doesn't know it, but he's about to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So this is pretty epic. This is two weeks in a row that uh, Finnegan has featured on the Beer of the Week. Does, he's famous. I know. Does that mean maybe it's going to have to be a regular feature? I, I don't know. Anyway. Okay, oh. so Pale Ale, brand new beer from Driftwood. I'm actually super excited. Cheers, Finn. Cheers. Cheers, Finn. <laughs> Yeah, just another pale ale. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's good. It's a nice. It's, it's a, nice a nice beer. Summer beer. Summer beer. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's, it's not, not remarkable. No, it's not remarkable. It's not going to oust Fat Tug or White Bark or some of their classics, is it? Yeah. No, I mean it, it tastes just driftwood. It's yeah. It's nicely it's, done. It's a little bit hoppy. It's a little, little. Actually, it's coming around. It's it's a little better than your average pale ale. Oh. Yeah. Who's that? Oh, oh, no. None of that. That. Okay, okay. Okay, we gotta jump right in. Uh, last week's winner of a Travels with Jordy t-shirt is Chicago Boater. Um, Mr. Chicago, or Mr. Boater, uh, congratulations. You want a t-shirt, get a hold of me and we'll make sure you get your t-shirt. Cheers. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And we will jump straight to the word of the week. Um, yeah, uh, which this week is going to be sunshine because this is about Pretty much as sunny as it gets. Uh, the first There's real guy. sunny day we've had in a very, very long time. I had actually written down summer, but it's nowhere close to summer, so <laughs> sunshine it will be. So sunshine you know what to do with it. summer. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I have to say, because a few people a few people have asked, how do you win this t-shirt? Well, you can win a t-shirt by simply using the word um, sunshine, which is the word of the week, in a comment down below, and I pick at random over the next two why did I say two? weeks one week's worth of comments and if i pick you uh you'll have won a travel story t-shirt it's that simple so think of something to say with sunshine there's lots to say there's lots sunshine. to say cheers see you next week cheers cheers sunshine i kind of want to go for a dinghy ride